good morning good morning to all of you and welcome to my channel so this is the subject actually i thought that this is quite important in our life and now how this subject is playing a crucial role in our life it is completely displayed through this subject this is a subject that is actually taken over by the bangalore university and is recommended for its mba program so i thought that i will be you know, going deeper inside the subject so that it will be helping people to uh, complete their examinations. So, uh, dear students, if you are watching this video, so thanks for watching this video and I will request you to please share it and subscribe the channel so that you will be getting the consequent videos, uh, you know, whenever it is uh, coming uh, live uh, in the YouTube channel so that you can be having an updated version of this and you can get a deeper insight about this subject. So without taking much time, we are entering this subject, the domain subject, the original science, which has actually contributed a lot to the management sciences. Management science, when we talk about this, we are coming across the various uh, you know, ideas I mean, the complete package, how you are entering the corporate life and how you are dealing with the corporate nitty-gritties that teaches you, that is giving you light in the management and the MBA program is basically developed. How uh, people uh, will be enabling, will, will enable to do their entire corporate uh, you know, task when they join a company. So uh, depending upon their specializations, so depending upon their functional areas, they will be working in the corporate life. So it points, uh, you know, I, I uh, many times I highlight uh, and many times I reiterate that there are two, you know, lives. I always give stress, uh, we are having two lives. I mean, the one life is our professional life where we work, where we, you know, spend the maximum time of the day uh, and we are meeting our peers, our colleagues. So that is one professional life. And also we'll be doing a lot of instructive uh, you know, activities or instruction guided activities rather I can say it. So those are our professional life. So we, we spend a lot of time in the day and we align our behavior to the organizational goal. That's quite important. That's quite important because organizational goal is already fixed. The vision, the mission, the goal of the organization is a, is a thing, a thing uh, to ponder upon. So we, we use our entire day on this. So this is our life. Another life where we stay, where we live. So that is another life, our own social life. So there should be a balance between social life as well as professional life. If we do not stress upon work-life balance, I mean, the harmony must be maintained. If it is distracted, if it is interrupted, if it is disrupted, then there will be, there will be direct impact on our productivity. Productivity, when we are talking about, of course, basically linked with the professional life, but a people, those who stay or those who live with his family, if the, in, that is also an expectations. Suppose you are playing various roles in your own personal life. Suppose you are a friend, you are a brother, you are a father, you, you, are, you are doing a lot of household works. So people are also expecting from that angle. So even if we do not measure our productivity in the social life, but the point is that people's expectation uh, tells us uh, how far we are fitting to our social life. So my point is here, if the professional life and social life is not there in proper synchronizing or proper harmony, then definitely we'll be facing a lot of problems in our life. So I highlighted one, that we are having two set of lives and a balance has to be there in the set of life. I mean, one is the professional life, another is the social life. So this part is okay. If we are going further dissecting our professional life, if we are going to further dissecting our professional life, then those things are also divided into many segments. For example, I will uh, like to say you that in our professional life, uh, we are going to face many tasks. We are going to do the task in a day-to-day -day basis. 
as per the instructions given to us by our authority, by our organization, by our institution, we are going to do in a daily basis when uh, till uh, we are in the office. I mean, we are entering the office, we are coming out of the office, the entire time period is guided by the organization. It is completely formal, completely methodical, completely systematic and rule bound. Okay, so that is while doing these works, we also come across two, again, two kinds of work. One is the quantitative works, another is the qualitative works. Quantitative works we can define like this, what exactly we are doing. Suppose uh, you are uh, working as an engineer, then you are working in a soft floor, then what are the production specifications or a root chart you develop and you are going to produce it. You are maintaining the temperature, you are maintaining the boiler, you are noting down the, all these uh, uh, you know, problems happening that you are uh, fixing the nuts and bolts. You, these are all technical aspects and these are all quantitative tasks. I mean, these are uh, given, this knowledge of doing this task are given to you by the technical schools or the management schools. So when we, uh, we are using our direct knowledge, whatever we received from our uh, educational institute, we call it say, quantitative task. I mean, this can be quantified also. Suppose uh, what you have done, you, you may say that, sir, I have produced this much uh, quantities or this much pieces. So what happens that here it can be easily quantified. Okay, but the other aspect is there, which is a qualitative work. I mean, this, uh, this work supports the quantitative work. For example, how you are behaving with other people. How can you measure whether you behaved properly or people are getting satisfied by your behavior, your maturity, your decision making? How can you quantify it? It's quite difficult. But there are a lot of subjects, there are a lot of subjects in the management that teaches you that qualitative aspects are equally important to the quantitative aspects. For example, suppose you do not behave properly with your colleague. So whenever there is a time or whenever there is a meeting, suppose you are going to tell something in the meeting, the people will be opposing you. You will be failed to implement the policies of the organization. You will be astonished in your mind what happened. These people, I'm going to implement a right principle, right policy, but still why people are opposing you. But the reason may be there, you do not command a good relationship with your colleagues. So it is the attitude of the people. Whatever you are going to do, they approach. So point here, what comes? Implementing policy is a quantitative work. But because of this loss of qualitative aspects in your life, you are not able to implement the quantitative work. So the justification is there. We have to equally mind the quality, qualitative aspects of our life. How we will maintain the good behavior, how we are judging other behavior, how we can align our behavior to the peers, to the seniors, to the subordinates, to the organization as a whole. This is extremely crucial for our organization's successful success in our life. So point comes here, certain subjects, as I already highlighted, certain subjects in our life that is qualitative in nature. We cannot measure them, we cannot quantify them, but in their absence, our life will be made as a hell. I mean, it's almost like a salt, no? you know, presence of salt, you cannot find it. But absence of salt, you can find it. I mean, if the salt is there in the right quantity, you don't talk about the salt and you enjoy the food, but you do not, uh, you know, bother about its presence. But by chance, salt is lesser in number and lesser in quantity and your entire menu, your entire uh, recipe goes waste and you feel that the absence of salt is there. So similarly, qualitative aspects are there. If they are present, your quantitative things will be going on smooth. You will be getting promotion. You will be getting good responsibilities. Your job can be enriched. But in the absence of the qualitative life, all these things will go fade. You will be branded as a loner and you will be branded as a misfit to the organization. So that is the point. So this all entire ball game revolving actually around the qualitative subjects. 
so dear students so you must be by this time you must be convinced that how important the qualitative subjects in our life so if we enumerate if we elaborate ki what are the qualitative subjects in our life the organizational behavior comes into the picture because organizational behavior which mba management students are studying in the first year they must be understanding that how important the behavior studies is if if that is not sufficient this is another subject psychology and life psychology and life is a directly playing a role uh, in a, in our professional life i mean how psychology plays a role and how we are getting affected by the psychological attributes or the ideas this subject is entirely on that so without wasting much much time we will be entering the components the contents of the subject through after reading this you will be understanding the number one learning outcome that you will be really convinced ki psychology is playing an important role in our life which we cannot ignore the learning outcome will be number one that we will be understanding the importance of the psychology in our life and we will not ignore that the point is that we cannot ignore and we will give importance to the psychology the second point we understand the contents of the psychology the subject contents the you know the aspects the dimensions the factors of the psychology and exactly when they are applying when when and where they are going to apply in our life that also second learning outcome we will exactly understand it affects our own behavior it affects our own relationship it affects our own interactions with our colleagues our peers our seniors etc so which aspects of the psychology is getting affected or it is giving impact in our life that is also learning uh, learning outcome too the third one which is very important that how we can apply this in our life how we can apply in this there are many things there are many things if we understand the fundamentals of the psychology then we can apply it to improve the relationship and improve our uh, qualitative aspects what i just highlighted just before i highlighted that you can improve the moment you understand the psychology then you can start applying it <clears throat> and the fourth point which is also very important you can well understand the alignment i mean the goal alignment versus your own personal alignment there must be you know organizational goal vision missions are there and being an employee or being a worker in your company or in your organization you must be aligning your behavior to the organizational life if you are not going to align then there will be a severe problem either you will be terminated or you will be demoted or or you will be transferred to a non lucrative post non lucrative not non rewarding location and people will not like you your job will be only enlarged not enriched like a lot of things so if you are successfully able to align your goal as well as organizational goal then then the fourth learning outcome of year will be coming into the picture i mean you can understand you are an essential part of the organization the organization will start valuing you the organization will tell you exactly that you are an important aspects of my company so organization will start loving you of course there is a quote that you do not love your organization love your profession because you do not know the moment when your organization will stop loving you that quotation is there but that quotation actually signifies that you please concentrate on your professional upgradations not a particular uh, boss particular company uh, you just enhance go on enhancing your professional values your professional attributes so that automatically just spontaneously the these things will be automatically aligned to the organizational values and even if you do not love the organization you do not attach yourself to the organization the organization will start attaching you i mean when the organization sees you as an uh, uh, as an essential part of the organization culture or organization life then you will be like anything you will be getting promotion your work life will be very uh, will be rewarding and you will really enjoy your work in the uh, day time and people will feel you that you are an important asset contributor to the organization so with this four learning outcomes what i just said you we are entering the domain of the 
psychology and life just before entering this let me tell you that <clears throat> you can compare this subject to a soft skill subjects this is almost a soft skill because people those who are uh, who are in the training domain of the soft skill they usually tell uh, this soft skills are also qualitative uh, you know subjects because if you know the soft skills if you know the application of the soft skills then definitely it is going to help in your quantitatively uh, measured aspects or quantitatively measured work and you will be having success you will be testing success in your organizational life so <clears throat> with this i am entering the domain uh, we will be talking one by one and uh, you know uh, dear students if you uh, go through the bangalore university syllabus you will be having this syllabus <clears throat> in this syllabus uh, you know first one first module is your uh, introductions of the psychology which we will be discussing about uh, with a little bit an antecedents i mean the history of the psychology you have to understand it how it came into the picture that is the first module the second module is the social psychology i mean how the psychology is getting applied to our social life i repeat how the psychology is getting applied to the, our social life and the third module third unit is on the educational psychology i mean where it is applied in the school the colleges in the educational institutions where it is getting applied if you successfully remember in the organizational behavior there is, there, there is one thing we studied everybody studied whoever is studying the mba that you know organizational life is uh, you know uh, intending intending uh, you know to make it a sharper you you hone your skills and you learn it a lot from the educational point of view and your personality is having one better aspect that is the environment if you remember successfully there are determinants of personality three determinants of personality this is a touching the second determinant of personality that is the environment i mean where you study where you stay this third model third unit is talking about that the fourth one is organizational behavior i mean the psychology apply applied to the organizational life how we are using it and what are the aspects we are going to encounter and we are going to face so this is the fourth module which we are talking about here we will be coming across about uh, several psychological aspects which are having a possibility which are having a possibility to hinder our growth in the organization life so this is your module so with this i am entering the introductions of the psychology and life so before going to a, a highlight about psychology and the life we will be talking about why psychology so while i will be highlighting these points i will be going a rapid uh, you know speed i understand ki you you may not be uh, having equal energy or equal interest to understand deeper inside the psychology of course you are not a researcher of the psychology but when you are talking about the application of the psychology you must be understanding from where it comes psychology is basically uh, it, you know uh, points its roots in the 16th century but actually it it has been documented well and it is given to the organizational applications by the sigmund freud sigmund freud uh, you know in the late 19th century who came into the prominence in 1870 80s when he started giving his own theory psychoanalytic theory to the market or to the society it came into prominence and we th those who people are dealing with the management and who are uh, teaching management or practicing management if they are understanding the role of the psychology in their life they always uh, date back to the sigmund sigmund freud or we say that freudian psychology people used to call it as a freudian psychology because the psychoanalytic theory is a such a vast theory and such a, a good theory that shapes our entire psychological contributions to the organizations so we are just understanding why why psychology i mean what is the importance of the psychology and how psychology is playing a bigger role in our life so this is the first point we are understanding that we have to understand ourselves if i know the psychology i can understand myself what type of person i am 
whether I am aggressive, whether I am cool, whether I am updated, whether I am a shy nature, whether I am introvert, whether I am extrovert, whether I like new challenges, whether I am a traditional mindset, whether I am open-minded, whether I am close-minded, you know, what type of person I am or whether I'm perfectly fitting to the social world, whether I'm not fitting to the social world, I'm perfectly tuned to the professional world. Let me say you my example, I do not feel comfortable in the social gatherings or the get together or the you know, you know, marriage ceremony, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel extremely comfortable to the conferences, seminars, there our behavior is perfectly tuned. People like us there because our behavior, expected behavior is perfectly fitting to the circumstances but when we go to marriage ceremony we start talking as if we are in a you know official function people astonish people uh, exclaim hey, what you are talking about your your talkings your dealings are a patterned behavior it is absolutely not fitting to the social gathering expectations so what happens that sometimes we are not adjusting ourselves to different situations so, so psychology says that if I know myself, if I understand myself, if I can successfully interpret myself, then I can fit to variety of the roles that is given to me and that is shown to me and I am forced to be one of this behavior. Okay, so in particular behavior where I am supposed to uh, show a particular type of behavior, I will be if I understand the psychology. Okay, so that's why, you know, we understand the variety of dimensions of human behavior is there. People are showing different type of behavior. And if I know psychology, I can well understand how they are behaving, why they are behaving. Even I will say that uh, instead of how they are behaving, why they are behaving, that's quite important. Because sometimes we are angry with our colleagues, with our peers, with our friends, because they are not showing expected behavior but we do not analyze what is the background of it. We do not analyze it. We just get angry and get lost and we, we cut down the relationship with the friends. But if we try to analyze the uh, history on, on the foundations on which basis he or she is showing this uh, behavior to me, then I think uh, you know, there will be a lot of cohesiveness can be developed. And people can understand keep the problems and the situations, the person who is showing me the behavior is there, then we can well adjust everything. I mean, people are saying that you have to understand the both, the positive behavior as well as the negative behavior. I mean, suppose you are getting a rose from your friend, of course, uh, you know, a special kind of friend, you can get the roses. Then if you are taking the roses, then you have to be ready yourself uh, by the thorns. If the thorn is uh, pricking inside your finger and the blood is coming out, still you should not feel bad. So that is our life. You know, that is our life. You know, people will be showing dart to you and you will be collecting a lot of darts. And people used to pass the comments, the quotable quotes that, uh, you know, the stones you are throwing to me, I will build my house on those stones. All these are signifying to that direction that we have to understand the psychology, we have to understand the background of it, and we have to understand the variety of dimensions of the human behavior, we have to understand the root causes of the human behavior, then only we can perfectly fit into this environment and fitting to this interactive behavior and our relationship can be much more improved that way. That is the essence of this. Then the second one, uh, we are talking about the daily life situations. This is the second point, what we are doing in the daily life, how we are accommodating ourselves to the variety of the situations and uh, how the rules, we are viewing the rules. Many times we notice that certain a policy Suppose a new policy is invest, uh, is utilized by the organization, people, people resist, people protest, and people pass lewd comments. Uh, uh, what is the policy is like this? I do not like this policy. The organization should not be doing like this. A lot of protest, a lot of uh, you know, uh, conflicting ideas, a lot of anger is coming out of a person's life. So, you have to understand why the organization is uh, implementing this policy. It may happen that organization doesn't tell you directly what the reason behind it, but you must be understanding it provided you understand psychology. 
So that is the point. The third one I told you that it is the application of the psychology, the ability to cope. I mean, if you understand the background, if you understand the need, if you understand the genesis of the problem, then you can ready to cope. You will not frighten, you will not apprehend, you will not be scared, you will not fear, then you will be, you know, developing better coping mechanisms in your mind to fit the situations. So with this, we understand how psychology is quite important in our life, we must not forget it. So that is the, that is why you know I just highlighted key relationship is something is a block is a building block on which basis our entire organizational life is uh, depending is depending upon the relationship. If you suppose uh, you are an officer, you feel that I'm an officer, I can command anything. But the point is that suppose you do not behave uh, good to your office executive or office assistant. If you ask for a glass of water, the office assistant will go on will go and come after one hour. He may be finding a lot of excuses for you, sir. The tank, uh, the water tank is not full. The water tank was empty. So I was waiting for the tanker to pour water into it. Then I was waiting the tank water coming to the arrow devices, arrow instruments. When the cooler, water cooler is getting filled, I am getting fetching a water glass of water for you. But you can do that. That may seem to be justified. But in the background, it may go to that mind, what the hell this person is commanding a glass of water. So glass of water, which you are expecting to get within five minutes, you will be getting 30 minutes. And you may not be understanding this is because of your relationship only. I saw, I personally experienced in many things when the people deliberately, even your subordinates, deliberately, you know, call to the industrial, uh, you know, uh, uh, soft floor assembly line and saying, sir, I am not able to understand you are a dear engineer, you are an efficient engineer, then please tell me that where this is going wrong. You may find that this is a very small uh, error and you will be angry that for a small error, error, you are calling me in the midnight of the life. I'm an engineer, I'm taking a rest out of your life, but you may not be understanding may not be understanding the anger in the mind of the subordinates and you you might have abused him yesterday you might have abused him day before yesterday and the person is keeping everything in the mind so if the person is keeping everything in the mind the person wanted to play with you so with justifications with justified uh, you know points he called you in the midnight and said you sir the diesel generator is having a fault i'm not being able to understand the fault so can you help me you cannot deny it your entire life is uh, you know gone you are an engineer in a company so you can't deny it you have to come but why why you had to come you have to understand why you are forced to come to the industries it is because of the relationship problem. So that is why we, when we study the psychology, we actually understand the relationship is the one thing which will help you in your life. Next is the sharpen the analytical skills. You know, if you see this slide, if you see this block, then you understand there is a perfect balance to be maintained between common sense and your, uh, you know, in your findings. There are many, you know, ways where we are actually getting the findings, what is happening around us in the world, and people do a lot of researches, people are getting a lot of uh, journal uh, references, they get out, uh, they come out with a lot of results, and they recommend. But the point is that every recommendation is not possible to implement in our own life. Suppose, you know, what the blunder Indian education system is doing, Everything, every books are written by the Americans or Canadians or the Russians, but we are referring them in our Indian context, but their uh, experimentations and their uh, values, their the uh, results, their the findings, do you feel that that is exactly applicable to the Indian scenario? Some of them are applicable, but some of them are not our context, our culture, our mindset, our attitude, our background is completely different to the Western countries, but we are forced. So there is a trend in the management also, you will be finding numerous books written by the Americans, but, uh, but unfortunately, we, our universities don't recommend them, the Indian authors, uh, don't highlight the Indian authors, although many good books are there. Although many good books are there, 
of a recent origin, we see some of the books, you know, famous authors like your VSP Rao, Asothapal, we are getting certain books in there and we start recommending that. But still, we are not able uh, to go ahead of Robbins, Luthans, Davies, because those books are so much, uh, you know, experimental, uh, find, based on experimental findings that we cannot uh, remove them from our life. Anyway, but we have to understand what is the common sense. Common sense here intending that what is exactly going around you right now and how it is having the relevance, what the studies, what the ideas you got from your school. You got from your business school, got from your technical school, the theories you have adopted, uh, you know, how it is uh, practically relevant. So that, that points, a mixture has to be developed and you must understand the importance of the contingency theory. If you have studied organizational behavior, then you must be able to understand the role of the con uh, contingency theory. There are a lot of theories are available, but above all, there is a contingency theory which says you that you, you see the practical aspects of the life, you see the situation, then you think from your own mind, which theory is applicable here. Because if that is not the case, then everybody can be a Sanjeev Kapoor. Everybody, everybody, because Sanjeev Kapoor's YouTube videos are there, recipe books are available in the market or Tarla uh, Dalal uh, books are available in the market. So if I go to market and purchase a book, then tomorrow can I be a Tarla Dalal or can I be a Sanjeev Kapoor? You get my point. So point comes here that there is our own mind implications are there. Even if we follow the same steps, but initially we will not find the same test and the same uh, you know, quality what the Sanjeev Kapoor is uh, showing to the market or what the uh, uh, Mrs. Dalal is uh, giving to the market. So point comes here that we have to understand the common sense. We have to understand where exactly we are situating. We have to understand what we are doing and which theory is actually applicable to this. So that is uh, that idea is given by the psychology. Uh, then we talk about effectiveness of the workplace. Uh, then again, the, you know, it is uh, reiterating the same aspects which we discussed about that organizational values, the relationship are largely based on the psychological domain. Here we are highlighting a bit of the fields of psychology. Fields of psychology is otherwise uh, known as the scope of the psychology, the applications of the psychology, the areas of the psychology, where the psychology is getting applied. I mean, variety of uh, you know areas and variety of uh, dimensions are available of the psychology. For example, we will talk one or two. That is, the general psychology is the basic characteristics of the, our behavior. Psychology is applied to the behavior. We till now I was highlighting this because in our everyday life, in our social life, in our professional life, life psychology plays a role. It plays a tremendous role. And we understand the relationship, we understand the root cause of the behavior, what the person is showing to us, et cetera, and all this. So uh, if we think about neuropsychology, it is coming to the medical front that psychology is connected to the body, body and mind. I told you that the psychology is the study of human behavior, that is the study of the human mind, but it's closely connected to our body. If the mind is not stable, if the mind is not cool, your body will be showing certain symptoms. So that is the point. Uh, neuropsychology plays a very vital role. Then we talk about comparative psychology. We talk about educational psychology, how it is applicable in our school, in our college, in our training centers, in our educational grooming centers, in our finishing schools, in a, where, where the psychology is being applied. Then similarly, developmental psychology is, uh, you know, concerning about our own growth, how we are developing our personality. Uh, you know, in this personality, if, you know, just one hint I will be giving you that Erickson is a great psychologist who has given one, uh, you know, year by year timeline, what should be done in our development of a personality. Or Piaget, Piaget and Erickson are two uh, uh, psychologists uh, who have given a tremendous inputs about our development, uh, you know, psychology. 
then if and it is recommended that if at a particular time period or a particular period if some certain recommended things are not happening then we are liable we are you know enough chances are there we will be showing one maladaptive behavior in the latter stage of our life that's quite important that comes in the developmental psychology and cognitive psychology is our own cognition own thought process own learning own experience psychology how plays a role and this is another military psychology in the army how they are using the psychology if you people have ever encountered the uh, ssb service selection board uh, entrance examinations then you must be understanding how psychology uh, is applicable there once in our life we went to varanasi to attend uh, one ground duty officers gdo uh, service there the seven days seven days package was there i'm talking a long long time before seven days package was there which was completely based on the psychological aspects i mean you will be given a group task you will be asking uh, to solve a puzzle uh, which you cannot solve individual level you have to solve the team wise so your team activities will be tested your team orientation will be expect uh, is tested measured uh, because in military or in army you cannot work in individual basis you have to work as a team or a team member and the team member a lot of coordination is required in a team so that is the point is that individual aspects which for which we indians are very notoriously called that we are individualistic in the international forum they see us we are having individual approach that is actually not applicable in the military psychology military psychology will be telling you that what exactly the team events what are the aspects of the team building what are the aspects of the group dynamics those are there and development of officer like qualities i mean the decision making the foresight the uh, you know comprehension about the root cause of the problem these things are psychological attributes if you understand the psychology then you can understand the root cause and you can understand why the sequence of the events is happening around you so these things are applicable in here it is also applicable in the health health sector because uh, you know a patient in the hospitalized uh, situation they need a lot of psychological boosting even we understand sometimes we are having mood swings sometimes we feel that nothing is going to uh, right nothing is going right nothing is going correct in our own life sometimes we need counseling even the art the age at our old age also many senior citizens who are much more experienced who have already taken many responsibilities in the government sector as well as the private sector they need counseling they go to counseling centers they talk to the psychologist and they talk to the psychiatrist they they developing a fear and the adaptability to the society is going thinner and thinner the more you are going aging the more you are going up in your uh, you know life so health psychology says that how the psychology is applicable to the health sector community psychology environmental psychology correctional psychology and aerospace psychology your environmental psychology is uh, you know enumerating uh, how the environmental factors are playing a role you know one example i can highlight you that suppose the students productivity is the student productivity is the same in the summer and same in the winter in the winter they might they might find very comfortable in writing the examinations where in the summer they don't feel comfortable your examination productivity your examination answers if you do research you will be finding it is more valuable more appropriate and more productive uh, productive in the winter rather than in the summer why this is having why this is showing it because the environmental factors are playing a role so point again again the point that the time suppose you know uh, you might be experiencing in your life that immediately after examination you feel vacuum in your mind you don't know what to do it is almost like a social loafing types you are a loafer you do not have any aim you do not have any objective you do not have any goal you do not have any plan in your life the moment the exam is over i mean exam was the target for which you were striving very hard you are working very hard but when the moment it is over then you suddenly feel that there is no aim so a uh, point comes here the situation the time the environmental factors like the weather conditions also play a role you can see that the people those who are in the 
cold countries they are showing uh, you know a one type of behavior i mean they are uh, you know very very people saying that they are very very mechanical but those people who are in the hot countries they are showing a bit social behavior social adaptiveness is a very high so further research is required why the environmental factors uh, are playing a role in our organizational life that is why you might be seeing that many organizations are providing the employees are the air conditioning environment why the air conditioning environment because one particular temperature controlled environment our productivity is expected to be higher expected to be higher but also there are many sub units or many sub segments which is showing that environment may not be playing a major role but it is there it is there you cannot completely ignore it so psychology also playing a role in environment also playing a role in the correcting our behavior modifying our behavior in the organizational behavior you must have studied the ob mod ob mod means ob modification of behavior i mean the manager the boss is uh, trying to modify the behavior of the employees so for that he apply many correctional techniques many uh, you know we can say the modification techniques to the behavior so that the employee will be behaving perfectly as per the organizational goals the deviant attitude in the organization will be lowered and the people will be perfectly working in coordination in tandem in harmony in the congenial atmosphere they will be finding themselves perfectly fit to the environment so this is correctional psychology so similarly aerospace psych psychology sport psychology political psychology all these are we just talked about the fields of psychology where the attitude the learning the personality the motivation everything comes into the picture so i said our life is hovering around into two aspects one is the quantitative aspects of the life where exactly we are implementing our technical aspects technical knowledge and another is the qualitative aspects of life where is the peripheral qualitative aspects are protecting our technical aspects our protecting our quantitative measured aspects if i do not maintain the relationship with my peers then i may be in trouble so that is why this emerging fields or in the fields of the psychology teaches us psychology is there in every walk of our life every field of our life and in that context so we must be able to understand how important it is in our life and how how uh, important we should give in our life these are a bit the history of the psychology antecedents in the psychology psychology dates back to the pre scientific psychology i mean we are talking about empiricist system and nativism associationism and the scottish school of psychology saying that the psychology was there in the 16th century uh, psychology was there but it was not properly documented documentation comes in the gestalt psychology in a german gestalt school of psychology they have documented a lot of things how our behavior is you know is showing uh, you know alignment to the organizational values the social values if if you are a student of psychology if you are uh, you know uh, interacting sometimes a student of the psychology they are having practicals they are having practicals there are many many gadgets are available in the psychology laboratory and in that laboratory many experiments are done and these are majority experiments are coming from the gestalt school of psychology i mean a words multiple words will be shown to you after some times you will be asked how many words actually you remember and uh, you know in different sequence looking to mirror you will be asked to draw a picture and how effectively you can draw the picture depends upon the how a lot in your mind so this a lot of things are there in the gestalt psychology so psycho neuroanalysis and hermic psychology dynamic humanistic existential and cognitive psychology are the modern psychology which we are studying and largely we talk about after gestalt we got the psychoanalysis what i said the father of psychology sigmund freud and we talk about freudian psychology he gave the psychoanalytic theory we will discuss and forth ki id ego and super ego three state of mind he actually highlighted in the psychoanalytic theory and he said that everything everything depends upon the the status of the mind and our productivity is depending upon that our job fitness is depending upon that our uh, everything life 
social life, professional life success is depending upon which ego state we are in and how we are responding to a particular type of stimulus in our own life. So that from that onwards, we talk about more, we document more and we think more and we try to apply more. That's why Sigmund Freud is known as the father of psychology. And so from here, psychoanalysis theory to the hermic and to dynamic to humanistic existential and cognitive psychology, which are directly related to different aspects of the life, different knowledge of the life is very much essential and very much evident in our textbooks. So here, uh, if we are studying the psychology, uh, we must understand where the psychology may or may not be effectively used. You know, people, uh, people, if they ask you that, are you studying psychology? Then I, I, I remember when our earlier stage of life, people are asking, if you are studying psychology, can you read my mind? You, you, your your mind reading is not the domain of the psychology. Your behavior reading and dissecting the behavior in a patterned, you know, formula or in a patterned idea is the psychology. We cannot, I'm not a tarot reader, tarot card reader, or I'm not a, you know, horoscope reader that I will be, you know, talk, reading your mind. I, I am not a palmist. I'm not a palmist so that I will see your, uh, you know, palm and I can tell you that what exactly going to happen. It's not psychology. It is not psychology. Psychology is studying the behavior, how people are behaving in a different situations and what are the, what are the uh, connecting, connecting dots from one situation to another. We are talking about that. So psychology cannot be applicable, cannot be applied in certain situations. You cannot say that you know psychology, there is a mob, there is a riot in the city, go and use the psychologist there, it is not possible. So role of psychologist when we are talking about, uh, we talk about how psychologists are helping us to uh, maintain our job fitness in our own life. So that is there, we are aligning the behavior, we are instrumental organizational change and development, counseling of the performance enhancement, these are everywhere the psychology is involved. And with this, we talk about the first module, which is the introduction of the psychology. So I hope by this time, the students, those who are watching this video, you must be understanding what are the importance of the psychology from where the psychology comes. Uh, and how it is applicable to the organizational life and uh, you know how we are uh, you know going to be benefited uh, from our the knowledge from the cognitive knowledge which the psychology gives us so we, with this uh, this video i stop it here we will be coming out with the different videos in the second module uh, which are the applied fields of the psychology like your sociology like your educational psychology, like your organizational psychology, which will be much more interesting, much more practical, much more relevant to our own life. So I request you to subscribe my channel and go through this. If you like the channel, then you please share it so that more and more students can study it. They can have a compact idea about this, uh, you know, psychology and its, uh, you know, implications of that life. With this, I stop this. Thank you for watching this video and uh, we will be coming out with a new video about the different uh, you know, attributes of the psychology and the different uh, practical aspects of the psychology. Till then, thank you, have a good day.